right. Um, so we'll just talk briefly as a group about um, facilitating ways we care for ourselves or not, although I guess Reagan was our facilitator in the other small group. Um, but just to keep us moving. Uh, um, so how did it go in here? Thoughts about facilitating that discussion? Um, I have uh, some questions, when, and we discussed it, but some thoughts about kind of comparing the two lists, um, specifically when they're about the same length, and kind of what to point out instead, um, which we talked a little bit about, making sure to point out that a lot of these are mindless um, actions and thoughts and feelings that we have. Yeah, other thoughts about, and uh, you guys talked about already, but um, maybe for our, from our group too, about how to compare the two lists when they're of a similar length. In addition to maybe guiding them towards the don't care being more automatic or mindless and the care being more <clears throat> effortful. I think if possible, guiding them also towards the um, perhaps they are automatic and more mindless because we do them more often. So even if there's a similar number of behaviors, if we thought about if we gave a point value to every time we were we didn't care or we cared, but we'd have more points in the don't care column because we just uh, do it so much. And then that's why it's so much easier to do, or we're more uh, automatically mindless. We're more automatically don't care. <laughs> Anything else that kind of questions or thoughts that came out of facilitating that activity? Um, I had a question about um, thinking about ways we practice kindness and meanness. Mm -hmm. So I asked that before we went into it, which I felt like uh, I just should have said, let's think about that and then hand out the worksheets. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a good um, way of thinking about it is that you don't want to have them do the mini activity aloud and right. then the full yes. activity. And in part, I think um, that there are a lot of activities, and this is one of them where it can be really helpful to like have a moment to think about it. And so part of the reason it works to break up into small groups is that um, it can take a little bit of time to think about like, oh, what are what are things that I do that are mean to myself? And so that just having, asking the question and asking for answers might be more likely to get silence because it can kind of take a minute to adjust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe just um, phrasing it that way, like let's think about some ways we practice this and then the worksheets. I would say just from facilitating this with the teams, this activity sometimes takes longer because of that because it takes them a while, and then when they're having to share out, it sometimes takes a while to get anybody. There's like one person who's like, okay, I'll tell you what we what we said. And the pairing them off helps a lot. Um, but sometimes it does, there's a little bit of waiting, like, somebody say something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like the other activity that is most similar to this about my mindless life, my mindful life, mm -hmm. in some ways it um, seems easier for people to come up with things they do automatically versus fully engaged. And then like that really can be, it is kind of a paradigm, sh paradigm shift mm -hmm. to go from, uh, to, to this idea of practicing meanness and kindness and to give people time and space to kind of grapple with that idea and then think of specific examples. One thing that we have found is, that has been helpful, we talked a little bit about in our side group, is that um, sometimes encouraging them or providing some structure around like the, the, the different categories of thoughts, the actions, the feelings, and that even by session four, right? Session four? No, five. 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 Or even by session five, you would think that they would get this, but some, some we have found some teams still need a reminder about like a thought, like something that you think you know, think yourself that goes through your mind or an action, something you do, or an emotion. So sometimes yeah. we provide a little orientation to that. It can be helpful a little bit to stimulate it's more participation. All right. Well, we we since we kind of took a brief break between uh, the small group and our.
our large group discussion, maybe we'll just go ahead into the next section of tea, and I will turn it over to Lauren, and I'll move the cameras. Sounds good. Yes, yeah, sure. That's right. Okay. Is this what we're using now? Is there any paper and a pen? Yeah, where is that? Oh, it was upside down. Like anything like this touch. Like the move. Oh, thanks. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. So I haven't facilitated this one. This is not an activity that we do, but I'm going to jump in. I'll just do it and then. Um, I will invite uh, Rachel and Stephanie and Tasha to certainly weigh in on any additional or different things that you do. Okay, so um, now that we've done uh, an activity to learn a little bit more about what it means to practice meanness or to practice kindness, um, we're going to do um, another activity um, to learn a little bit more about ways that we can practice kindness. Um, so this is going to be a mindfulness practice, and to start, I'm going to pass out a piece of paper to everyone. And you can just make sure that you have a writing utensil handy, and then I'll give you some more instructions about what we're going to be doing. Um, you might take a minute and grab a clipboard, or find a surface where it will be easy for you to write. So if you need to get up to grab... You need to throw pens. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody else like mindfully <laughs> mindful toss? Yeah. Pen. Does anyone else need something to lean on? Or you know, you can also move to the table if anybody, anybody wants to move to the table behind <laughs> you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So everybody has a piece of paper. Okay. Does everybody have a writing utensil? Anyone need a pen? Um, does everyone have some place to, something to lean on to be able to write? This. Okay. So this is a mindfulness practice, and it involves writing, doing some writing about gratitude. What does gratitude mean? Absolutely. Being thankful. What else comes to mind when you think of grat the word gratitude? Appreciating things. Appreciating things. Absolutely. Being thankful. Appreciating things. Grateful. Being grateful. Being grateful. Uh -huh. okay. Exactly. So what I'd like for you to think about um, is the things that you're grateful for. And in a minute, I'm going to, in just a moment, I'm going to ring this bell. And when I ring the bell, I'm going to ask you to start writing, but to do so in a very special way. I don't want you to worry about spelling or punctuation or grammar or anything like that. In fact, you're the only one that's going to see what you're writing. I'm not going to look at it. Um, uh, or you're not going to turn it in like you do in school. Um, I don't even want you to worry about putting words into sentences, okay? Um, if you get stuck and you can't think of anything, then um, you can just pause, which is totally fine. Um, or you can even keep writing something that you've written before, okay? Um, and so what you're going to write on the page um, is all the things that you're grateful for in your life. And they can be things that are big, um, or they can be things that are small. Um, they can be things that have happened before in the past, or they can be things that you're grateful for right now. Um, they can be people that you're grateful for. They can be places. Um, they can be things like activities that you get to do, maybe foods that you get to eat. 
uh, nature, anything. There are no right or wrong answers, just anything that you're grateful for. Um, and the last thing is that you also can draw. So you can write, um, but you're also welcome to draw. The important thing is, um, is just to write or draw whatever comes to mind that you're grateful for. Um, and um, do this until um, I ring the bell again. Okay, are there any questions? Okay.
finish your thought and then put your pen down. So let's take a few minutes to talk about what that experience was like. Um, what did people notice as they were writing about things that they were great that you were grateful for? trace kind of the way my thoughts were moving on the page and like one thing led to another. I really like that. Mm -hmm. Who else had that experience is that as they thought of one thing they were grateful for, they were able to think of another thing, sort of had that feeling almost of like a snowball. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are nodding. It's interesting. I appreciated in this practice that um, it was time to write anything. And that it was kind of, it was so open-ended, so that it wasn't like just the same things that you might say around the dinner table at Thanksgiving or something in front of everyone, but more personal about what, what you personally feel really grateful for, it could be anything. Is that how we normally write? How is that different from other assignments, like say what you're grateful for? the Thanksgiving dinner table, or even in school, different writing assignments that you have. There's like an expectation for how you're going to support your argument, maybe, or <laughs> like that there will be something that other people would um, agree with or understand. Mm -hmm. um, and with a school writing assignment, there would be a lot more like explanation around those things. So you might not be able to share about as many yeah, absolutely. This was sort of a, uh, a really free-form way for you to think about all the things that you're grateful for and for yourself, right? Just for yourself, which is really different than how we normally write or other kind of writing assignments that we might have, is that this was is for you. And thinking about that, um, what kind of feelings came up? How do people feel either during, how about during the activity? What kind of feelings came up as you were writing about things? As Stephanie said, sort of anything personal that came to mind. The people and the things that I wrote about brought me joy, so I felt joyful as I was writing them, mm -hmm. happy, mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Vicky, how did joy feel? What did, what did you where did you notice that in your body? Um, I just kind of felt lightness all over my body, mm -hmm. like a nice like tingling. Mm -hmm. Kind of like what Rachel was saying, a feeling of lightness on this tingling. Mm -hmm. Did anyone else um, feel, have any other, uh, what other feelings did other people experience during this activity? It was really pleasant, mm -hmm. really calm and peaceful. Okay. So you felt a sense of calm and peacefulness. And can you say anything about, or did you notice anything? about where that showed up in your body? Um, mostly like in my chest, my throat felt really relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, was that different from before you started the activity, Vicki and Stephanie? Yeah, I think like at the beginning I was kind of indifferent about what we were doing. I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm here. <laughs> and then <laughs> as we moved on, I was like, yeah, this is fun. Mm -hmm. Isn't that about amazing? Content. Yeah. You know, just thinking about things that you're grateful for can have that influence on how you feel. And you feel physically too, not only mm -hmm. mentally, but also physically. Mm -hmm. okay. I feel like I'm so mentally calm and like my face is relaxed and I'm like smiling, which I don't think I was just doing before. <laughs> I don't think I'd go around smiling all the time. Definitely, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any thoughts that were different? So you all talked nicely about noticing some change in how you felt. Did anyone um, notice a change in how they were thinking from before to after the activity or during the activity? Like it wasn't having unpleasant thoughts or like negative thoughts, but like 
at one point I just wrote several times like I'm so lucky, I'm so lucky, I'm so lucky. And so it just felt like a change, like from kind of neutral to more just like, mm -hmm. wow, I have I have so much that I could write about and that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like having like you had said earlier almost having those thoughts of writing writing things down about things that you were grateful almost appeared as more positive, generated more positive thoughts. And as Stephanie said, that's is a are pleasant, those sorts of pleasant thoughts can also be related to pleasant feelings, like feeling calm and joyful and relaxed and so on. Um, so the, this is one example um, of the type of activity, this, this gratitude practice, writing practice. This is one example of ways that we can learn to practice being kind to ourselves. And one of those ways is to actually, on purpose, spend some time really thinking um, and writing about things that we're grateful for. So you might consider this, um, the benefit of this, and, and this can take some practice. Did anybody have a difficult time coming up with um, positive or things that they were grateful for? Anyone feel stuck at any point? Natalia, you're nodding a little bit. Yeah, but I think it's because I thought very broadly. So I'm like, oh, I already named all the categories that there are. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, yeah. So did you have that thought to yourself at, 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 during the practice? Yeah, and then kind of like Rachel, since I like couldn't think, I just started drawing hearts. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for um, being brave to, to share that experience. I think that I want to just remind everybody that this is a practice, um, so there's no right or wrong way to do it, and it's perfectly okay for um, when you, even when you have a, a free form um, instruction of generating things or thinking about things that you're grateful for, it's also okay if other thoughts arise, and it's all part of um, it's all part of the practice. Um, so thanks for sharing that, and that 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 may happen. Okay, so um, should we move on to the through the next activity and then stop for practice point? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so we're going to um, do another activity now, another mindfulness practice to learn a little bit more about other ways that we can practice these um, healthy habits or ways of practicing kindness to ourselves. And for this, um, I'm going to invite you to lay down. This will be a, a laying meditation. And this will be just another tool for learning ways that we can practice kindness to ourselves on purpose, um, practicing um, uh, kind thoughts and practicing um, kind feelings. Um, so just take that minute as we've been practicing throughout our group together and you all have gotten used to us saying, just take that moment to really um, uh, be thoughtful about um, how you want to place your body. Most people have just uh, jumped into their cocoon, which is totally fine. Everyone's got their comfortable spot. Um, you might consider if you'd like to have your, just as a reminder, if you want your head flat on the ground versus if you would feel more comfortable with it on a pillow. Just would have noticed that position of your hands and if your fists are still clenched, maybe see if you can relax them, maybe just wiggle your feet just a little bit. You can wiggle them really wildly or you can just wiggle them a little bit just to, um, just to get relaxed and get them in a position of comfort. And go ahead and close your eyes if you're comfortable. Um, if you are not comfortable closing your eyes, you're welcome just to have a soft gaze. And everyone is lying down. So we're going to spend a few moments practicing a way of strengthening helpful thoughts and helpful emotions through loving kindness. We often, as we've talked about today, cultivate unhelpful thoughts and unhelpful feelings by practicing these things unconsciously, mindlessly, automatically going through the motions. But instead, there's another way where on purpose we can cultivate feelings that can help us and we can also extend these feelings to others as well. So I'm going to ring our bell to get us 
just started. As you're laying here quietly, tune into your breath. Without trying to change your breath, see if you can draw your attention to the in-breath and the out-breath from the very beginning of the in-breath to the very end of the out-breath for three cycles of breath. Remembering there's no right or wrong way to do this. We're all just practicing. We're going to be bringing to mind something that we've experienced before and letting that help us to practice loving kindness right now in the present moment. Bring to mind a time when someone was kind to you. It doesn't have to be very big, it could be something small. small act of kindness from a friend, parent, sibling, coach, even a stranger. It could be something that happened very recently or something that happened a long time ago. See if you can bring that image to your mind. just doing your best to recall that experience that happened before. Remember how you felt. about this experience of someone being kind to you and how that kindness felt to you. See if you can do a mental scan of how it felt in your body. Temperature feels warm. You might notice the weight of the feeling. Does it feel light? Perhaps you feel a sense or a feeling of calmness. Notice if the feeling has any movement. Staying where you first noticed it, or is it moving around? Just doing a mental check of whatever you're experiencing right now. And 
remember that it's normal for other thoughts to pop into our minds. You might even have trouble thinking of an experience that's totally fine. Just pay attention to your breath, whatever you're experiencing. Staying with this memory, you might notice that someone wanted to show kindness to you. Just play with the idea that you can take the same feeling of kindness, the same sense of tender love and kindness, can choose to offer the same feeling to yourself. Sending this wish to yourself. I wish to treat myself with tenderness. I wish that others be treated with kindness. Taking now a few deep breaths. As you repeat these wishes to yourself, to treat myself with kindness, and all others also receive kindness. So you hear the sound. Deepening the breath, giving yourself a moment to come back into the room. And as you're ready, coming to a seated position, feeling free to take your time, you can stretch, you can roll on one side. Taya, we do have extra blankets. Would you like one? I'm good. Thank you. I have them right here. <laughs> oh.